Welcome to A Cloud of Witnesses. My name is Robert Paris. I want to share some insight from Smith Wigglesworth on the subject of revival. I believe, as I've said many times, we're on the verge of the greatest revival in history. Smith Wigglesworth prophesied there was coming a greater revival. It's interesting that he talked about, uh, he shared this prophecy with Duplessis, David Duplessis, and said that this thing would start to begin in the mid-century. And we saw the first stage of that, of course, in the mid-20th century. I love the fact that um, David Duplessis was Pentecostal and he started to reach out to evangelicals because God would bring to unity, according to Smith Wigglesworth, and work through all these people. And I have the honor that when we began researching into revivals, the Lord put in my heart to buy this certain book. And I bought it online. And when I received it, I opened it up and found it to be a first edition of an Edwin Orr book, an evangelical a person from Northern Ireland that talks about revivals. The book, however, was signed to David Duplessis with a note from Edwin Orr, and it is stamped by David Duplessis as having received it and put it into his library. It was dated 1949 in confirmation of what Smith Wigglesworth prophesied. So I believe we're living in that preseason of what's going to be the greatest revival. We understand what that revival is going to be like. So I want to share some insight from Smith Wigglesworth. He said, revival is coming. God's heart is in the place of intense passion. Let us bend or break, for God is determined to bless us. Let us bend or break. We must lay hold of that God wants revival. God wants to move in this generation because we see in the word that there's always a harvest in every hour. And we are surely at the last hour and Jesus is coming soon. And he's coming back for a harvest and he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So we must bend or break. We, the church, which lines up with the word, of course, in Joel chapter 2, where we're to rend our hearts, where we must be willing to change. So many of us are so proud and we think we have it. We must realize when the Holy Ghost turns up and he begins to move in this great revival and it's starting, that we must change, not Him. There must be no coming down from the cross, but a going on from faith to faith and from glory to glory with an increasing diligence to be found in Him without spot and blameless. There must be no coming down from the cross. It's easy for many of us to, I want to die. We put ourselves on the cross, but then when the pain comes, we want off. It's a big show thing. And that's where we understand that we're to render our hearts. It has to be an out, not an outward rending of the garments. This has to be a real change, a real dying. Because when the Holy Ghost turns up, He comes to destroy all that's left of your old man so that the new man comes forth. The Holy Ghost comes and He's going to destroy and kill. And that was the next thing He said. The seed has to die. And we know that from the Word. That the seed must fall to ground and must die if it's to bear fruit. And God is coming. The first thing the Holy Spirit turns up is to kill you. It's interesting that he would quote. He said the early and the latter rain appears. The early rain is to make the seed die to make the seed die. And we're starting to feel that early rain where God is calling the church and us to die to the old man. So the new man rises up so that we truly are a people of the spirit, a people of power. So much in us must die. It must be crucified before the throne. We must get out of the way and come to a place where I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me and he lives through me. If we're going to see what Jesus did on the earth continue because what he started to do, he's still doing. He's going to do it through earthen vessels that are surrendered and yielded and have come and allowed the early rain to fall on them and to kill. And it's a difficult season. Maybe you're going through it. I've been there. I had birthed the church and we had a great ministry going and the Lord says it's time to put this baby on the altar before me and surrender and let it die. It was one of the hardest things to surrender something I'd built and something was deep and meant a lot to me. But I realized that God had to do a great work. Something I didn't fully get, 
on that season was hard. The wilderness of promotion is not fun because a wilderness is set out to kill you. But God was working on me, on my heart, to prepare me and get me ready for what He wants to do. And he said, the ashes of the great fire of consummation that will burn in the heart of the people, the word of the living God has come. And so it's beginning. It's beginning. If we would surrender and yield, the fire of God is beginning. We're expecting something. I would tell you it's beginning and God is killing us. That's how I know revival is coming. I talk to so many believers and it's tough and it's difficult. God is killing you, the old man, because the revival move is beginning. It says, when he comes, he will convict the world, convincing men of sin. And they said, he has come. And one of the things that Smith Wigglesworth wanted us to understand, he has come. Jesus is when the Holy Spirit has come. He has come. He is on the earth. And as long as he's on the earth, we should be expected a revival. Because the Holy Spirit, as he explained, is not a touch or a feeling. He is the Almighty God. He is a person. He is the Almighty God, and he is a person. And he came here rushing to the battle when he was in Jesus. What did he do? It says that Jesus went around doing good. He was anointed the Holy Ghost. And he went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the enemy. He came to destroy the works of the enemy because of the Holy Ghost, the anointing on his life. He walked this earth as a perfect man. He was perfect God. But he walked this earth as a perfect man and perfect surrender to the Holy Ghost. And we see in his ministry what the Holy Spirit was desiring to do based on the heart of the Father. Daddy God hasn't changed. It's still in his heart to see Jesus glorified, to see this generation experience the power of God. And so the Holy Spirit was sent on the day of Pentecost. He's still here. And as long as he's still here, we are to occupy we are to lay hold of and press forward. One of the things I want to share that Smith said, I believe if you wait until you think you have the power after you receive the Holy Spirit, you will never have it. We're in this waiting mode. And God is saying, it's time to go. The power of the Holy Spirit is within us, Smith said, but it can be manifested only as we go in obedience to the opportunity He has for us. And many of us are starting to see doors starting to open up just a little. And what the Holy Spirit is saying is go. Because when the Holy Spirit came, Smith explained, after you've received it, the Holy Ghost, it is go ye, not sit still, but go into all the world and preach this gospel. We come and we all want to sit in church we want to serve and do all these things. When the Holy Spirit is saying, go, there has to be a go in us. And many of us, God is birthing into you these ideas and thoughts, opportunities. And it's time for us to step up the plate and realize that the mission field is around us. We don't have to go to some foreign nation when the mission field is right here in the U.S. and in Canada and in Europe. They need to hear the gospel. There's a generation that doesn't know Jesus. And many people, God is putting in you some creative thought or idea. And God's saying, step forward, go. When the Holy Ghost, as you pray in the Holy Spirit, as you pray and seek heaven, something should stir in the inside of you. Smith explains, I've come to encourage, to stir you. It's my heart as well, it's what's my calling. To stir you, to provoke you. So as you pray, something on the inside of you begins to grow. And as it begins to grow, you start to sense, flow with it. Go with it. God is able to move and steer a moving ship better than one that's sitting still. And we just want to wait. Wait here until we know when God is saying, start, go, go in this direction. But I need all the instructions. Just go. I will steer you as you keep going. But what if I go wrong? What if I'm wrong? Stay and seek the Lord God like you've never sought Him. Pray and fast and go after it. Many people don't truly go after the Lord till they know that they know that they know. Then go. Then do. We easily say, well, 
The Lord's telling me to do this. We say that so easily and so casually that we've lost the honor and the respect and the fear of the Holy Ghost. To stand in His presence because the Word said, Jesus prayed in John 17, Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is truth. We don't like truth because, you know, our opinion is truth. We have opinions and we say that, but there's an absolute truth that he has. It doesn't change. You can't go to him, well, let me tell you my side. He knows it. And he stands with an absolute moral truth, an absolute truth and regarding all things. This is truth, period. No discussion. And we need to be so sensitive to the Holy Ghost that we bow to that truth of his word. I don't like it. It offends me. Well, guess what? Repent, because God's not changing. And if you don't, you will harden your heart. And we need to keep our hearts soft so that we go forward with God. Smith said, be prepared, a vessel to pour out torrents. He also explained that when the Holy Ghost comes, he wants you to be a well-watered garden. If you're spending time with the Holy Ghost, we need to spend time every day in prayer and seeking and allowing that fellowship with Jesus. Stay in His presence. Get in His presence. You need His presence. Don't just make these little religious prayers. Go after God. Spend time in His presence. Because when you're in His presence, guess what? You get filled to the overflow. So there's a spilling from you. So that people come into your shadows, they're healed. Because there's a spill zone all around you where the glory of God just keeps spilling out and people can just get hold and touch the spill and they're healed. You should be an overflow. It starts as a stream, but then there should be rivers flowing from you. We come to the well and we drink and then there's an overflow of the Holy Ghost. The gift should overwhelm you. We look at that opportunity, we press forward and then the Holy Ghost and spend time. There's an overflow. God just starts to overflow and pour into all these thoughts and ideas. Go! God then adds increases and reaches people above and beyond anything you dare ask, think, or imagine because it's the Holy Ghost. Go. Those are the torrents, the overflow that Smith was talking about. He said, revival is a call to martyrdom. The word says, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall be my witnesses. That word witness is martyr. People need to see a people that are dead to them. This is a dead man walking, but I'm alive to Jesus. They see an old man totally crucified because what they are seeing right now is a church that looks just like the world. Not a church that's so separated, sanctified, dead to the world, but alive to Jesus, that they have a life coming from them. There's something different about them. They overflow with the fruit of the Holy Ghost. They're changed. People look and say, I know that person, but they're so utterly changed by the hand of God. That's what the world needs to see. That's revival because revival starts in you and me in the presence of the living God. Absolute abandonment. Absolute abandonment for a divine equipment for the early and the latter rain appears. We must come to an absolute abandonment. Surrendering, yielding. But God, I have these plans. This is what I want. Put it on the altar. Everything that's of us, but this is where it's supposed to go. On the altar because when the Holy Ghost turns up he will ha- you have the opportunity to be offended Jesus said that pray that you're not offended because the Holy Ghost is Lord and he will glorify Jesus and he'll begin to move in and through us his divine purpose and we are to volunteer freely in the day of his power in Psalm 110 and the day of his power has come and God is beginning to move so it's time for us to come to that place of surrender and yield God if you can use anyone, you yes, you can use me. It cannot be a song. It's got to be real in the secret place, in the presence of the living God. He said, the uttermost death for the uttermost life. If you're going to bring forth the life that will change people, that will really reach this generation, there must be an uttermost death in you. You must completely die. No good thing dwells in this flesh. But in this earthen vessel, God has put His glory. And that's what this generation needs to see. It's time for us to stop going to church services because there's a great word or somebody that we uh, esteem is famous preaching. We want the anointed word. 
We want life. And that life must start in the presence. Do you get in the presence? So when you open up the Word, it's living. It's alive. It's not a book anymore. Are you in the presence of God so that your relationship with Him is growing? And there's a changing. There's a dying to you. Because Smith said, dying, searching, crucifixion, no resistance. So there's a season of dying. And there's a season of the searching where God turns up and you are searched. And crucifixion, the stuff that remains, put on the altar, killed. And there's no resistance. And it's hard sometimes when you got, I let go, God. I don't always understand, but there's a letting go. There must be a revelation if we would have the Almighty God living in us. There must be a revelation, or sorry, revolution. God wants to do a revolution in you to change you utterly. And if the living God's in you, there will be a revolution. Because revival is a divine assault. It starts in you, and then it spreads to the world around you. If we will let God have His way, He will surely transform us in the presence of you surrender. I'm telling you, so many issues we struggle with could be changed if we would just, in the presence of God, first of all, go after and get in the presence. Pay the price to get in the presence of the living God and be changed and transformed there. In order to understand what it means to have power, there are two things necessary, Smith said. Let me just say that again. Smith said, in order to understand what it means to have power, there are two things necessary. One is to have ears to hear, and the other is to have a heart to receive. We need to hear what heaven's saying, and we need to receive it. Because remember the word says, receive ye the Holy Spirit. That's not just let him come into you. That is receive him and who he really is and the authority that he carries and the fear that we should have of him and the honor and let him do what only he can do. That's receiving. It's the same as receiving the word from heaven correctly. If the Holy Spirit would fall upon a church and that in the first century that church would turn the known world upside down without the internet, without all these marketing programs, using horses and walking, Yet they, with the Holy Ghost, would turn the world so that Christians were found everywhere. We who have all this technology and all this capability, how much more could we do if we would let the Holy Spirit move? Because the Holy Spirit has come. And I said He's always been rushing to the battle. It's time that we aligned ourselves with Him and joined Him and rushed to the battle. Gideon was told, go in this the power of your might. What was it? What was it that Gideon went that enabled this man who was hiding and in fear suddenly to become a deliverer for the nation of Israel? He said, for I am with you. We must recognize that God is with us. If you get in the presence, you will recognize Him and you will understand that He is with you. And if He is with you, you can run to the battle without fear because He will keep you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? It's time the church baked, spent longer in the presence of God died to us because we must come to an utter end so that the life that God wants to pour in us overflows from us and reaches this generation. Well, I pray that you're stirred. I pray that you're encouraged. I pray that you lay hold of the Holy Ghost like never before, that you really enjoy and spend time in the presence of the living God. Go after it daily. You cannot afford not to have this fellowship, this relationship, Constantly seeking His face, staying in His presence because you need it. And as you spend time in His presence to be transformed from glory to glory and that fruit to abound in you and through you, we see the power. Fixing our eyes on Jesus because He's the author and perfecter of our faith. Keeping our eyes on the cross and the blood that washed us. Well, I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you are encouraged. I thank you, Father God, for the Holy Ghost. And let us have a go in us. Let us have a stirring in in us, a restlessness in us, Father God, a disturbance so that we come with a holy desperation before your throne with a passion and a confidence that what you've done in a previous generation, you will do again. We come not in hope, but in faith, confident, Father God, of your word, laying hold that your word is truth, And your word will not return to your void. And therefore we receive from you the breaking through. We receive revival in us. And let that revival go forth, Father God, and touch the world around us. It's time. There needs to be a harvest, Father God. One of the things Smith Wigglesworth said, I never wrote it down. I did. I would rather see one man saved 
then 10,000 people healed. We're all about, I want to see the manifestation, the greatest manifestation is to see someone's life convicted by the Holy Ghost and truly come to conversion. That should be the burden of our heart, to see this generation one for Jesus. It's time. We've been waiting long enough. It's time to begin to move. It's time to begin to step up to plate. As we cry out and seek God and the Holy Ghost fills us, step out and every avenue and opportunity the Lord will open. Let us walk through it in obedience and let's see what God can do. This generation needs to know Jesus and we've been called for such a time as this. So let us not fail this generation, but let us serve us. Let us serve this generation as all those in the previous generation served theirs. Be blessed and thank you for watching in the name of Jesus. Amen.